Hi guys, um, this really short video, I just wanted to jump on and just talk to um, you guys a little bit about measurement. Um, so in um, one of my classes, um, I, I didn't really get through the slides in, in the fashion that I would like to. Um, and so I just thought it would be beneficial if for me just to, you know, just recap a little bit, talk a little bit about, about some things. Um, and maybe just give you some examples and that sort of stuff. And so this is what this video is about. And so I'm, in this video, there's going to be a series of three videos. Um, and one of them is not going to be super important, but uh, but you can go ahead and watch all three of them. Um, so this is the first in in a series of three videos, just wrapping up conceptual framework, just uh, getting uh, you know finishing finishing things up, and, and just making sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so in the first video, we're going to be talking about measurement. Um, so like we said, in the conceptual framework, um, we have different measurement bases that are considered. Be measurement bases, another way of saying measurement types, right? And so the framework says, you know, there's lots of different ways in which you can measure. However, we prescribe two ways, right? And so the two ways that they prescribe are our historical cost and our current value. So those are the two ways that we are allowed to, to use when we're measuring um, in, in using the conceptual framework and using IFRS. Um, like I indicated, it doesn't always mean that these are the only ways that exist, but these are the only allowed ways. And the, the important thing that we need to, to quantify or to understand is that we need to be able to represent all of our assets, liabilities, expenses, incomes, equity in a rand amount. So we must have a, a rand denominated figure that we can say, okay, we can point at this and say, okay, this is this is what it is. And so um, in order to do that, we use one of the different methods as our, our vehicle. Um, this slide you would remember from our lecture. And so basically all we're doing with this slide is we're saying that when we're dealing with measurement, we have two options. The first option is historical cost and the second option is our current value. And then if we choose current value, we must choose between three different ways of measuring it. Um, if we look at historical cost, I mean, most of you would be familiar with historical cost. All historical cost is, uh, all, all that it relates to is, it is just the price of the transaction um, at the time at which it arose. And so if we think of it, it's basically the price to get into an asset. It's the price to get into a liability. Um, so, for example, a historical cost uh, in, the ter in, in terms of a creditor will be the value on the creditor's invoice, right? So that might be historical cost. Um, uh, for in terms of a vehicle, it's the price that we paid for the vehicle. That's historical cost. Um, and so we sometimes refer to historical cost as an entry price, an entry price, it's to get into. Um, so like how you enter a building, you enter into an asset, you enter into a liability with the historical cost price. And so that's what, that's why it's uh, sometimes mentioned or referred to as a uh, entry price. The important thing that I want to point out to you is that this is where prudence comes in. So if you have a look at your conceptual framework, you will see that when we're talking about historical cost, um, we mention there that, um, so, so I'm looking at uh, chapter six, verse, uh, uh, paragraph uh, 25. Um, so chapter six, paragraph 25, and there you'll see they mention that an asset, right? Um, in the first sentence, it says, is the most recent transaction in market terms. And then it mentions a little bit about the entity. And then I want you to focus in on that third line. The third line in that paragraph says, it, 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 what the entity would at least recover. That makes us, that reminds us that an asset is measured at the minimum economic benefits, right? So what the entity least can, can, can expect, right? But then, if we look at line one, two, three, four, five, six, if we look at line six in, in paragraph 25, 
um, there we start talking about a liability, right? And, we, and so basically they, they enter in by the saying, you know, the liability is the result of the most recent transaction in terms of market terms. And then in line six, it says, the liability will normally be no more than, right? The amount that we recognize. So, it, so with the liability, we must recognize the maximum amount. Right? And this is that that interplay of prudence, right? And this is what prudence is talking to. This is what prudence is getting at. We, we are saying that we don't want to make ourselves look too good by having too big of an asset. And also we don't want to make ourselves look too good by having too small of a liability. So we want to have the minimum asset and the maximum liability. That's what the conceptual framework is talking to or telling us when it's talking about historical cost. And then finally, with historical cost, it says, and this, and this is in paragraph 26, it talks there about the fact that we must do some adjustments to the historical cost, some, uh, some uh, amendments to the historical cost for things like consumption, right? And so it mentions consumption. And then it says, if the expected value, the amount that you think you're going to get from the asset changes dramatically, from what the cost, what the historical cost is, then you must also process what they call an impairment. And that normally happens like, uh, so let's think about that. The, the expected value changes dramatically from the cost. So for example, I have a car. If I have an accident, if, I, if, I, if the car is, is involved in an accident, the value of the car changes dramatically from the cost of the car. Right? Because now it's damaged, now the car is damaged. So there, are, that's the situation where we can say, okay, the value has changed dramatically. It's not as a result of consumption. Remember, because consumption, we will refer to as depreciation. But this is, you know, the, it's changed dramatically. The value has changed dramatically. Expected value has changed dramatically. So I call that an impairment. And it says, I must make adjustments to the carrying amount or to the historical cost for these things for the consumption and for when my uh, expected value changes dramatically. And that we find in paragraph 26. Okay, it does mention that, um, so down in paragraph 28, it says these consumption and these uh, changes in your, your expected value, you must recognize them as an expense. So it does mention that we need to have some expense. And so that's why we find depreciation payment losses is an expense. Okay. Um, moving on to the next option, which is our current value. And so remember the current value, the difference between historical cost and current value is historical cost is at the beginning. So at the start, at when we got the asset, the entry price of the asset. Uh, whereas current value is sort of like a mixture. It's, it says, oh no, it's going to be um, in including current situations, current conditions of the asset, of the entity, of the market. And so and so that's the difference between the current value and the historical cost. One is only at the purchase, only at the time of purchase. The other one is dealing with the value at the time that we are reporting. So at measurement date, another word for measurement date is reporting date. So at the time that we are reporting, that's when we deal, well, that's when we talk about value. And so there's, there's three options, as we mentioned. So there's fair value. Uh, the fair value basically just means that I go to the market, I find my good in, uh, find my asset in a market, and that's going to be the price. And often times what happens is when we're dealing with homogeneous items, homogeneous means all the items are exactly the same. It's easy for me to find the fair value. So, for example, if I'm dealing with a share of a company, all the shares, all the ordinary shares are basically exactly, they look the same, they, they operate in the same, they still have voting rights, et cetera. So they are homogeneous. Um, so I can go into the stock market and get there for me, I can find the fair value of, um, of my, my, uh, my share. Uh, the one thing that I just want to add is if you notice, when we talk about current value, current value looks very much forward into the future. So it has a lot of predictive value, right? Whereas if we look at historical cost, it has a lot of confirmatory value. It does have some predictive value because it will result, uh, the historical cost can be part of the inputs that we put into calculations to, to make predictions. But 
current value is more predictive just straight off the bat, right? It, it has got more of a predictive quality to it. It's just straight off the bat. Uh, uh, bat. That's current value. Um, then the next element is value in use and uh, fulfillment value. These are calculations. When we talk about assets, we talk about value in use. When we talk about liabilities, we talk about the fulfillment value. These are calculations. They are what we call present value calculations, right? And this is the type. This is the type of calculation that you will learn to do in FDM. Uh, and all it basically says is, I take all of the different cash flows related to this asset, and I come uh, and I bring it back to an amount that I can compare to something happening today, right? So I pres what we, we we say we present value. We're bringing it back to the present value. Obviously, we're taking out the effect of inflation, et cetera. And so these are calculations. So fair value, I'm, I'm going to the stock market and seeing the, the share price. Whereas uh, value in use and fulfillment value, I'm doing some sort of calculation. So you can see the one that being fair value doesn't require any sort of assumptions. It's very straightforward. Whereas value in use and fulfillment value, they, in, they require some sort of uh, calculation, some sort of assumptions that I need to do. And so here, disclosure would be required with, with regard to the uh, how I came to that calculation. Uh, then the next uh, or the last part of current value is our current cost. So in our current cost, you'll see that we talk about equivalent assets or equivalent liabilities. So, for example, if I've got a car and if my car, if my car was involved in an accident and it has a dent in the front of the car, do you think I will ever be able to find a car with the same dent? And the answer is no. And so that means my car is not homogeneous. It's not exactly the same as everyone else. It is what I call heterogeneous. So it's different, right? which means I need to come up with a card that is similar, that maybe does have a dent, but maybe not in the same place. Maybe the car has a dent, uh, the car in the market, the one that I look for in the market, has a dent at the back of the car, whereas my my car has a dent in front. So, so I look for something that's equivalent, that's similar, right? And so, and so, um, then I look at that price and what that amount is out in the market, and that's what I might use. Um, and so what you find is sometimes you might end up starting with a fair value and making adjustments to that fair value to get the current cost, right? So for example, I might say, okay, since I can't find a car that has a dent in the front, I'm going to just take a car that has the similar sort of uh, kilometers as my car, and then I'm just going to minus uh, 50,000 rand because I think it will cost me 50,000 rand to repair the car. And that's going to be my, my current value. And so that is what current value is. It's where I find a, a, you know, a, 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 a price that's equivalent to my asset um, on measurement date. And so that is what current value is. I just wanted to talk about the difference between fair value and current value. One is market-based. One is entity-specific and, and asset-specific. So, so uh, it, it, you have to, it's customized. One is customized, but one I can just take directly off the stock market or directly off the shelf. So one is market-based, one is uh, specific, and that being fair value is market-based and current cost is specific to the asset and specific to the, uh, to the um, uh, entity and to the asset or liability. When I'm talking about the measurement perspective, Remember we said uh, when it comes to um, fair value, we're looking at how much something is selling for. So we go to the stock market and we say, how much is this share selling for? So that basically means how much is someone willing to see to get rid of it? So how much are they, so it's an exit price, right? Whereas when I talk about current cost, I'm talking about how much would it cost if I had to replace my asset? So I'm talking about an entry price, right? And so one is talking about replacement cost versus one is talking about selling cost, so selling price. So it's just slightly different. And remember, we're talking about replacement under current cost, whereas under fair value, we talk about market prices. So there's no calculations that we don't need to make any adjustments. And both of them are um, they, they are allowed in terms of IFRS, but 
the fair value is more commonly used, uh, whereas current cost is sometimes less used because it's a bit trickier to calculate. Um, then I just want to talk about, so now we know the different measurement bases. So we know we've got historical cost and we've got the three types of current value. How do we make the decision? How do we make these decisions of what to use? So the framework tells us go back to the uh, fundamental characteristics and see which of the measurement bases provides the most relevant and the most faithfully represented information and then use that. Okay. Um, they, they add on to that by saying, you know, you need to look actually at uh, things like things like your cash flows. You need to look at what information would be relevant, uh, how it contributes to the future of the, of the business uh, from a cash flow perspective, etc. That would be relevant. And so include elements of that. And then it also explains in relation to faithful representation, it also explains that you will never have a situation where something perfectly uh, faithfully represents uh, an element or, or it's, it's free, entirely free from error. Instead, we're aiming to get as close as possible to faithful representation, right? And so we want to make sure that um, even if we do have a level of measurement uncertainty, we can still um, help or, 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 or assist that situation with a lot of disclosure. Right? And, 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 and so it's important to make sure that we strike the balance between relevance and faithful representation. Um, one of the things that they do mention is they do mention that we should look at how we measured this item uh, previously. Um, so, so we, we should actually look at, um, you know, trying to be as as consistent as possible. But remember, we don't aim for consistency; we aim for comparability, right? And so that's what what they say. And then finally, when it comes to sort of other issues, they say we must try and limit or eliminate other issues by making sure that we uh, keep our information comparable. We keep our information verifiable and keep our information timely. And so that is uh, what we must aim for uh, when it comes to um, our, our, our measurement, right? And so, and so uh, one of the things they sort of measure and they talk about is you can use the accounting mismatch. So, it, you know, we talk about the matching principle in accounting, uh, et cetera. And so they say, what you must do is you must try and limit as much as possible, bring down uh, situations where you have uh, the accounting mismatch. Um, and also, you must try your best to try and eliminate uh, all of the uncertainties, but you might end up in a situation where you have some uncertainty on both ends. And so they say, what do you do? Um, and they say, what you need to do is you must make sure that you don't end up in a situation where you don't have one of the fundamental characteristics. So you mustn't end up in a situation where you give so much uh, preference to relevance that you basically eradicate your faithful representation away, or you give so much or vice versa, right? So you must try and maximize both. You must be in a situation where you're maximizing both of these uh, things. Um, and so, yeah, so that's basically uh, what we, what I wanted to talk about relating to measurement. Uh, please come back for the next video uh, in which we will be talking about and going over the capital and capital maintenance. Thank you.